Now he's had three previous incarnations and this time he comes forth to the 20th century and the trenches of the First World War. So while you have a look at the making of the programme, I shall go off scouting around the corridors of the television centre. Rotters. Okay, opening titles. Two, one. Oh, right yep. I think Baldrick has got stupider and stupider as the centuries have gone on. In the first series, he was actually the brightest out of Baldrick and oh, out of Baldrick, Percy and Blackadder. Um, and then he got a bit stupider. And now he's terminally stupid. It's impossible to see how he actually gets through a day. You, just remember to look the other way, okay? You get five, well done. four, three. Yeah. I don't find it terribly difficult to be stupid. I spy with my little eye something beginning with M. Um. Uh, um. Uh, um. Uh, um. Uh, um. We wanted a place and a time that could reproduce to a certain extent the claustrophobia and the, uh, the sordidness of medieval England. <laughs> and the best way to do that is to set it in the middle of a war. It seemed the perfect uh, place for the kind of plots that we like in the Blackadder, where the Blackadder thinks that he's going to get out of trouble by doing a cunning plan and then gets into more so. Good sitcoms, so the common wisdom goes, are set in places where people can't get out. Porridge in prison, Faulty Towers, Basil's trapped with a ghastly wife that he can't escape from and a business which is obviously going bust but which is his only livelihood. And we've set ours in a trench dugout and the, there is only two ways to escape. One is forward to the German machine guns and the other is backwards to the British firing squads. Um, yeah, the producer is um, basically a man who has no talent whatsoever, um, except the talent to criticise everyone else's talent. I hate to raise this, having worked on it for three hours, but do you think it's a very good joke, this orders Hughes, since you suggested it? This was nothing yeah. to do with me. <laughs> it, <is good. laughs> it was. It was nothing to do with it. It was up on the board. I, I just read it out. It's a good joke. It's no, it's all right. It's good. It wasn't it's good. Working. All it was was the pedestals wasn't quite good, so because right. right at the end of the word, so but it, an order for six lengths of Hungarian crushed velvet curtain material. material. That's good. Yeah. You know, okay. that's something. Six lengths of Hungarian crushed velvet curtain <laughs> material. In cerise, <laughs> in cerise and banana. <laughs> we don't do any rehearsals like actors are supposed to do, going over the thing again and again and again, learning your words. All we do is argue about the best way of doing it. I'm still labouring under the belief that no one ever ordered anything by the phone in 1970. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong. true. It wasn't that kind of culture, was it? It was not a telephone so ordering not culture. Rice. The rehearsal process is a big chunk of what makes Blackadder funny, I think, because we have um, a business called tweaking, or sometimes known as plumpening. If someone says, you know, uh, I'm going to... Uh, the general and somebody else has the line why and someone and then let's say Blackadder has a reply we'll attempt to pep up why say you know odds bods I was confused as a man who's had his head cut off um, and put on the wrong way round. I have to say that the writers are saintly men who put up with an awful lot of uh, brutality um, Richard's Richard Curtis's constant cry to me is you wouldn't do this to Shakespeare and I said I think I would I think a lot of those plays are far too long <laughs> no hang on hang on there's something wrong, wrong here because surely, if you're ordering a cab for a Mr. Redgrove, oh, from Arnold's Grove in that case, it should be rather than to Arnold's Grove. If, 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 I, I thought it was Mr. Redgrave who was ordering the cab. But in fact, <laughs> what you're saying is that Mr. Redgrave, Mr. Redgrave is the person who's going to be picked up and who's on the top bell. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my, my. Great world of logic. <laughs> no, that's fine. Just change it to four. The hardest thing about writing Blackadder is in the end, you know, when you love a joke and when the cast don't love it, and you have to argue your way around. But the the highest hope is that eventually you'll come up together with a line that they like and you like more than the one you wrote. On the contrary, George, we've had plenty of orders. We've had orders for six meters of Hungarian crushed velvet curtain material, <laughs> four peel or rice. And one chicken tikka masala. <laughs> and four pilar rice and one chicken tikka masala. And a cab 
for a Mr. Redgrave picking up from 14 Arnos Grove ring top bell. <laughs> the rehearsal process certainly is a wonderful therapy because you can laugh yourself sick for 40 minutes on end helplessly. <laughs> come and join me, Stephen. Come on, come over here. It's very difficult to sit next to Baldrick because he's so smelly. This is Stephen Fry, who sure. plays General Melchett, who is a complete, utter, vicious duffer. Oh, now you're just trying to be lovely. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. I'm really rather awful. Spickly! No! You shot my speckled Jim! I've never played anyone quite so mad before. The previous Melchett I played in Blackadder 2 was, uh, was rather sort of grave and um, uh, quite, quite good, really. Grey, I suspect, Majesty. I think you'll find it was orange, Lord Melchett. Grey is more usual, ma'am. Who's queen? <laughs> Majesty. They were these magnificent orange elephants. <laughs> Whereas this chap is, is blustering and really quite seriously deranged. He shot my pigeon! Uh, uh, Blackadder always seems to work best in times of absolute madness, when the whole world is mad. Right. And it's as though Rowan's character is the only sane person. And I don't think there are many times in history that were madder than the period around the First World War. 1978 springs to mind in Britain. Mm, yes. I don't know, why, why am I thinking Early 79. That? I early, early 79, <laughs> yes, that's right. I spotted with my little eye something beginning with R. Army. For God's sake, Baldwin, army starts with an A. He's talking about something that starts with an R. Motorbike. What? Motorbike starts with a... Right. right. Right, my turn again. What starts with come here and ends with R? Don't know. Come here. Ow! Uh, sure. Okay. Fine. Great. Time for some poolside gossip. This is what I found out this week. Well, Rowan Atkinson's ambition was to be a cameraman. He originally applied to the BBC to be an engineer and was turned down. Tony Robinson really wants to be a romantic hero. He'd like to play Romeo to Victoria Wood's Juliet. Or vice versa. Alexi Sale, whose stuff starts on Thursday, is a closet ballet dancer. He goes to a gym for dance classes, but won't go to a dance studio as he can't cope with the idea of wearing pink leg warmers. And Michael Palin, while he was trying to go round the world in 80 days, which started on BBC One last Wednesday, he was spotted in Cairo and ended up with a small walk-on part in an Egyptian gangster movie. Bizarre, eh? Well, that's all for this week. Tune in next week when we'll be looking at a new drama serial starring Diana Rigg, and I'll be in the bath. So, cheers. <laughs>